So guys, you must have heard this term uh, 10x engineer or 10x developer being used in the past uh, couple of years, right? And this is what I want to talk about today. So uh, there's a lot of um, confusion around it. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, misinformation about it. I'll tell you what uh, from a founder's or a CTO's perspective or, or somebody who's been in the industry, who's built companies. So from my perspective, what does a 10x engineer look like? You know, so there are engineers and then there are 10x engineers, but what does a 10x engineer look like? And what do you have to do to uh, become that? And when I say 10x engineer, it's not just because of the person's skill, but that's the kind of money that this person commands in the market. In the sense, if you're a technical recruiter, uh, this person stands out and you already know uh, this person as in, he stands out because, you know, from the rest of the resumes or CVs. And this guy, uh, uh, you know, goes for a lot of money as in he gets a huge, huge package, right? So how, how does somebody uh, become a 10x developer? So let me talk to you about that. So, um, as a developer, when you start out, right, as an engineer, you'll probably on a programming language. So I've written PL1, which is basically programming language one. It could be Golang, Java, uh, Python, doesn't matter. So uh, you do that for about two years to get a lot of, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a great level, you can become a good developer in two years time. That's what I think now, because there's so many resources available online, right? It's not like how things were 10 years back. In just two years, you can become a really good developer if you uh, know the right resources, you, you go to the right channels on YouTube and you you know uh, work on the right projects. You can become a really good developer in just two years' time. Uh, now, um, now, there are uh, a few ways uh, that you can go from here. You can either keep specializing in that same language, like let's say if you took, took a Python or Golang or, or Java, and you kept specializing in just that language and doing the same type of projects, but uh, you know, in a much better way, in a much more nuanced and advanced way. Uh, and you know, you, let's let's say you take that to the next five years, right? From the day you started uh, the programming language to uh, five years. Now, this is what your graph will look like, your growth graph. You will uh, keep growing a little bit uh, in the first two years, and then after that, you'll start flatlining. Uh, it's not a completely flat line; it's almost a flat line because this is like the uh, you know, you'll, the law of diminishing returns. Because you stick with one programming language, you won't uh, learn a lot. You'll learn very few, few things which will be incremental, but they won't uh, really, uh, you know, uh, help you stand out in the market. Uh, because I can tell you that a lot of, uh, you know, once you know a programming language, then your value uh, is not, uh, unless you do something really cool, uh, your value does not keep increasing, right? So when I'm showing you these graphs, I'm, I'm showing this to you from a perspective of a person who's looking at a developer uh, in terms of his market value, right? No, I'm not saying that this is, uh, uh, like, I don't want you to start creating those 10,000 hours graph and showing that this is how your skill increases. I'm showing you how your value in the market increases, all right? So your value starts flatlining out here. Now, if you learned another programming language, and you took that to the next five years, right? So let's say uh, you complete two years in, in one programming language and you thought, now oh, you know, I know Golang, let, let me learn Rust or Python or something like that. Then your graph will, uh, you know, increase like this and then again it'll start increasing for five years, right? So this is uh, a good place to be as in it's not bad. Now, uh, let's say after somewhere uh, in the third year, you learn another programming language like Python. So you have Golang, Rust and Python and you can build almost the same projects in all of these three, three different languages. Now, uh, what you start becoming is like you, you could become like an almost like an uh, uh, like an architect kind of a guy who can work through on different technologies. Let's say if there's a big project going on which has multiple microservices, you know, there's an uh, AI and ML microservice learning in Python, running in Python. There's a lot of data engineering going on in GoLang, and the entire product is built in Rust. Now you can start, you know, heading those kind of products, right? Or not? I won't say heading, but. I would say that you, you can be really comfortable in working those kind of huge projects which have microservices running of different uh, programming languages. So here your growth curve is uh, you, 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 know, you did really well and then you learned another language, it went up and then you, you learned another language. So, but now still uh, it, it'll start to flatline after uh, about five years, right? Because essentially you're just learning different programming languages and, um, and companies, can kind of smell uh, smell that off you, you know. So uh, when people think about 10x developers, they think, okay, so let me just learn so many different languages, and I can, you know, gain so much different experiences, building different different type of projects in different like programming languages. But that's not how you become a 10x developer, right? This is uh, sorry, there's a 
uh, phone call, I'll take it up later. Anyhow, so this is uh, not the way you become a 10x developer, all right? So this, the uh, if you've come to this video, the, you're probably wanting to see a graph, something like this, you know, something that can turbocharge your career and almost make it uh, like, you know, a straight line and which is, uh, you know, uh, almost tending to become perpendicular, uh, like uh, parallel to the y-axis, right? And completely perpendicular to the x-axis, almost tending to become. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the the uh, the more perpendicular uh, to x axis you can take it the better uh, your uh, you know growth obviously and there are ways to do that but let me talk about this first so if you want to you know grow really fast and want to have consistent growth what do you do so the first way that people will tell you about is become becoming programming language agnostic in the sense uh, learning so many different types of programming languages and building so many different types of projects that you, uh, that, you know, recruiters don't now have to kind of try and fit you in into a different, uh, in, into a particular uh, role. And so when I say recruiter, I'm not uh, talking about a recruiter who picks up the call and, you know, calls developers, not that guy. Talking about recruiter, let's say I'm the CTO and I want some developers to join, join my organization, right? Or I'm a team lead, I want some, uh, or an engineering manager, I want some particular type of people to join my organization. So he's the recruiter now. He's thinking that, okay, if I hire this guy, he's he's built, he, he has so much expen extensive experience that, uh, you know, even if we change our tech stack two years from now or one year from now, this guy will be able to adapt, right? He knows GraphQL, he knows uh, how REST APIs work. And he was even there when there used to be SOAP APIs, he knows gRPC. So he knows so many things that uh, it kind of, you know, he's programming language uh, agnostic, like he knows Python and React, uh, sorry, Python and Rust and all those things, right? So this guy is kind of quite valuable, right? So I'm not saying you become this guy. I'm saying that you go one step further. You become tech stack agnostic, right? So in the sense that you're not uh, uncomfortable working with different tech stacks. So what do I mean by that? So if you have been watching my channel, uh, whenever I uh, make Golang videos, right, I don't just make uh, a, s a single type of Golang videos, right? I'm always doing something different. In the sense, like Golang with Postgres, Golang with MongoDB, Golang with MySQL, Golang with Cassandra, Golang with, you know, uh, you know I have like DynamoDB coming up. So this means that whatever tech stack you throw at me, whatever database you throw at me, I'll be able to kind of uh, manage that, right? And uh, and even if you you know gave me a project on Rust and Python, so by the way, um, uh, my products like Dominate AI and Remote, Remote Teams, they're built using microservices, and all those uh, the microservices are in three different languages. So it's not just one uh, microservice. It's there's a microservice running in GoLang, microservice running in Rust, and <clears throat> and machine learning microservice running in Python, right? So, uh, and you might ask, you know, why do we need three different languages? Because these three languages are for three different type of purposes. Like Golang is very good for data engineering, like, uh, you know, moving uh, and processing a lot of data at the same time. Python is, as you know, it's good for machine learning and data science and all that kind of stuff. Rust is a very good, uh, you know, very fast language where you can build the entire product off. So that's why we have three different uh, microservices, right? And I'm equally comfortable with React, equally comfortable with Angular, and I can just, you know, build products using handlebars. If you just had, you know, if you just restricted me to just using handlebars or some, uh, you know, shitty template library like that, I, I would be able to build you a complete product, right? So what I'm saying is that uh, not just programming language agnostic, but you became tech stack agnostic in the sense whatever front end you use, whatever back end you use, whatever uh, database you use, you should be able to um, you know, handle handle this. Uh, this this is not easy, and uh, what this means is now uh, you have the same five years, right? Yeah, you have the same time. I'm not saying that you work harder or you work you know 15 hours a day or something. I don't I don't recommend that. I recommend working as less as possible. But all I'm saying is don't keep specializing in that same language. Maybe uh, you know diversify diversify in terms of uh, like maybe you did a project with react then you did a project with angular then you did a project with uh, you know golang react and postgres golang react and mysql something like that you know keep doing uh, different type of stuff so uh, when i say tech stack agnostic i don't just mean front end back end and uh, you know database i also mean that you can work with the uh, microservice uh, frameworks. You can work with Molecular. You can work with Spring Boot. Uh, sorry, I've written Spring Boot twice. You can work with GoKit, right? Uh, GoLang uh, microservices framework. You will be able to work on serverless. You know, you'll be able, you'll, you would have done projects in API Gateway, Lambda, uh, you know, using this kind of a stack, API Gateway, Lambda, DynamoDB, and SQS. This is complete serverless stack. You would have, done, you, you would have experience with this as well, right? So find a project on uh, YouTube and build this entire thing and build your own projects using this tech stack. So just keep experimenting a lot and show this kind of an extent, extensive experience on your uh, GitHub or your profile, right? If you show this, uh, you become extremely valuable to a recruiter. 
because uh, you know they now they're not scared which team to fit you in they're not not they're not scared that you know if we stop using golang and if we if we want to introduce uh, an element of rust will this guy run away or will this guy you know not feel comfortable or will this guy be able to adapt so they don't have to worry about all of that so you, you because you've already done all of this right and you're um, completely tech stack agnostic right angular react doesn't matter micro front end doesn't matter to you you can work on anything if it's serverless they go serverless or they they're building a new functionality that's completely serverless you can build that completely on your own now there's one more element to it. Uh, so um, if you're comfortable with AWS, you don't have to now become like a PhD in AWS, right? I, you, I don't recommend going or getting all those certifications like I'm a this certificate, uh, I have this certificate, that certificate in AWS. It doesn't matter. Just learn the basics, learn all the serverless and all that stuff. Learn how to get your projects on AWS, and then start learning the same thing in GCP, and start learning the same thing in Azure, because this kind of this makes you uh, extremely valuable. Because now you can deploy projects in AWS, GCP, and Azure. You can go to any company that you want, right? Now the company doesn't have to worry about oh this guy is just you know an AWS guy. Now, but var stack is on GCP. Will this guy be able to handle it or not? You know, they don't worry about that. Um, and then, uh, if you also have experience with, let's say, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, and a little bit, little bit of data engineering, like using Kafka and you know Spark and all those things, and a little bit of machine learning as well, SageMaker and all that stuff, then you become even more valuable. Now, the, now the recruiter is not seeing you as uh, just a developer. He's seeing you as a 10x developer in the sense somebody who they could train uh, to become a leader, who they could train to become a CTO, or, or even if not a CTO, at least a head of a complete department, right? Complete department, let's say machine learning department or something like that. And uh, now these are the people who will always go to critical uh, leadership positions because these people have so much extensive experience that no matter where the technology takes them, let's say uh, five years down the line, programming uh, dies. You know, you have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, no programming or whatever they're calling it, no code. Uh, platforms. So even after you build a new code platform, it has to be deployed somewhere, right? So you have to entire, ma manage the entire uh, infra. So so you will still be valuable, right? You'll always be valuable uh, to these kind of people. You will go up with the company. They will give you a lot of equity, a lot of shares. So that's where uh, you know I want you to be going, uh, and I don't want you to be just doing this. Uh, and I'm coming from a lot of experience in the tech industry. I have, you know, like I said, built companies, worked with the biggest companies, and I can tell you that this is extremely um, valuable. So whenever, uh, so so my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? I'm I'm trying to, you know, create videos in all of these. Like let's say, go language talker. Go along with Kubernetes. I have those kind of videos coming up. But even if uh, it's not there on my channel, go to other channels, check out with your programming language, whatever programming language you know, how do you deploy it uh, using Docker? How do you deploy it using Kubernetes? You know, how do you, uh, how do you use Kafka with your programming language? So those kind of things, you know, just keep doing that. And build a complete CI-CD pipeline using Jenkins or something like that, right? And then that's where you'll um, come to know the entire life cycle in the sense, right, from building a product to deploying it to maintaining it, DevOps and all of that stuff. Once you have an experience with the entire Entire life cycle, then you're extremely, extremely valuable. I mean, you don't have to worry about anything. You're a 10x developer already, and you'll get a, a huge package from uh, the top companies, and you're sorted for life, basically. But that's where you need to be. You don't want to be this guy, right? 10 years down the line, he's still on .NET or some something like that, right? And he's still struggling. You don't want to be that guy, all right? So thank you for watching, and uh, do subscribe to this channel because you'll get some killer insight like this all the time on my channel which is basically no bullshit and um, you know real industry advice so thank you for uh, listening and um, see you in the next episode